creepy guy laughed when girls said no. By the time I met Tyler, I had already heard about him from several friends, both male and female, at the small, liberal arts college I attended. He was strange, they said. Very friendly, but very physical. He would grab girls and pull them onto his lap, and when they tried to get away, he would laugh and hold them tighter until one of our male friends forced him to stop. I made a mental note to avoid him. I was sitting in the school's cafe with one of my male friends, who he knew, when he approached and tried to grab me for the first time. I don't remember what the conversation was or how long we had been sitting near him, but when he reached for me, I instinctively pulled away. He grabbed me anyway and pulled me towards him, and when I told him to stop touching me, he began laughing. He didn't sexually assault me, his hands were on my arm, but when he laughed, his eyes were cold and humorless and his grip on my arm tightened. I wrenched myself away and ran out of the cafe. When a concerned male friend caught up to me, I said, There's something wrong with him. He's going to hurt someone. My friend walked me to Kmart, where I bought pepper spray. The second time Tyler tried to grab me, he approached the group of people I was standing with and tried to put his arm around me. I turned around and said, Don't touch me. Don't touch any of my friends. We don't like it. You make us uncomfortable. My voice carried and people turned to look. He looked shocked and his grip loosened. I left the cafeteria. He avoided me after that, and I thought it was all over until I went back to the dorm one night and found that none of my friends were there. When I texted them, they said they were in the school's gym and that I should come. At the gym, I found around seven girls standing around with the school's dean. Tyler, I was told, had approached one of my friends in the gym grabbed her by the hair and forced her head towards his crotch. Every single one of the girls in the gym that day said that Tyler had, at one point or another, grabbed them and held on, refusing to stop touching them when they said no. None of them had reported it because he hadn't actually sexually assaulted them. He was just aggressive, but until that night, he hadn't crossed the line. The girls, including myself, all wrote down our experiences with him and gave our testimonies to the dean. Tyler was expelled. I never saw him again, and hopefully never will. My next-door neighbor was a murderer. When I was in year one, so five or six years old, I lived next door to this woman and her daughter who was the same age as me and in the same school. Her daughter was called Holly and all I can remember about her appearance is that she had blonde hair. As there was a very low wall between our two gardens, I would often see and talk to Holly, and we became friends. She would jump over the wall and play in my garden and I would go over to her house. She was a nice girl as far as I can remember. What I noticed over a couple of months of being friends with Holly was that Holly's mother would frequently change boyfriends and the guys would actually live in the house with them. One day, over at Holly's house, I met one of her mother's new boyfriends. I can barely remember what he looked like, but he took me and Holly into the garden and gave us skipping ropes and other toys and watched and supervised us while we played with them. 
He joined in skipping once but was very cold, like he didn't really like us. I think he might have been doing it to impress Holly's mother. A few days or weeks later, I was in my own garden with my mother when I heard the man and woman arguing next door. The guy was very loud and aggressive, telling her to get in the fucking car. And that was how I learned the F word. Started using it all the time myself until my mother got me to stop. Throughout the weeks that the boyfriend was around, I noticed that Holly was getting odder in the way she acted and the things she would say. She also tried to get me to do dangerous things like climb fences and stuff. I remember once in school, she tried to pick me up and then threw me down, making me bleed. Then one day, a whole load of police showed up and kicked down my neighbor's door. I didn't see any of this, but heard it. Turns out, the woman's latest boyfriend, the guy who'd played skipping with me, got arrested for killing some woman, or more than one, and making Holly assist with selling drugs or something along those lines. I never played with or talked to Holly again, not really sure what happened to her, and the house's door is still dodgy from being kicked down. It just feels weird that I could run into Holly again in the future and not recognize her. I guess I could have already. Two chance encounters with the same violent woman. Let me preface this by saying that I work in a psych hospital, so my experiences with mental illness are pretty extensive. On a regular basis, I work with people suffering from acute schizophrenia, so it doesn't scare me anymore. But this did. About two years ago, I was walking through Target completing some last minute holiday shopping. I had a big TV in my cart, so I was a little more aware of my surroundings than normal. There's nothing like an expensive purchase to put a target, no pun intended, on your head. After walking down a few aisles, I noticed a woman following me. She was in her mid-thirties and I would have never taken her for being homeless. I thought she must just be going the same way as me, so I took a different route and ended up going to the second floor. I didn't see her follow me, so I assumed I was in the clear, at least until I turned around and saw she was right behind me. To this day, I don't know how she made it to the second floor at the same time I did. I asked her what she wanted and instead of responding, she gave me the most terrifying smile I have ever seen and began to walk closer to me. At this point, I ditched the cart and ran to get security. They told me, oh yeah, she's in here all the time. She's homeless, lives in the area. I've had a lot of experience with homelessness, with mental illness, but she was different. This was the first time in my life I'd ever felt like someone genuinely wanted to hurt me. Cut to this week, about two years later. I'm sitting in my car waiting to make a right turn, and here comes this same woman crossing the crosswalk. She was in all gray sweats and barefoot, but I recognized her face. She was walking from a park where a lot of transient people live with a Ziploc bag full of supplies, almost as if she had just been released from jail or something. I'm waiting for her to cross the street, hoping she doesn't notice me. Then the person behind me begins honking. I guess he didn't see her. 
that's when her eyes caught mine slowly almost strangely slowly she begins walking directly toward the front of my car out into the middle of the street i can no longer get around her she's taking her time making sure i can't go anywhere finally she comes over to the driver's side and i'm praying she'll just keep walking and leave me alone but no instead she begins pounding on my driver's side window trying to break it open at this point i don't care if i run over her barefoot or anything i just peel off as fast as i can and I find the nearest cop and let them know what happened. This was my second experience with her, and the second time I felt like she genuinely wanted to hurt me, possibly worse. I just needed to get this out because I'm still pretty shaken up about it. I wish someone would give her the help she clearly needs, but until then, I feel a little less safe knowing she's out there. How the police ended up in my apartment at 5 a.m. So before I start this, let me preface this story with the layout of my apartment. There are four rooms and a living space with a door that goes into a small hallway which leads to another door which goes outside. All the apartments are built the same and have the same furniture. So last night, it's around 5 o'clock a.m. and I hear a buzzing at my door. I figure it's just my friend messing with me and so after it rings about a dozen times, I get up and go to the door. Now there is a hallway that separates my door from another door, which is how you get inside. So I open my door, and as soon as I do, a six foot four man rips open the door, which must have been ajar from one of the other people in my complex, and comes to the little crack of my door I have open and shouts, My name is Jose. This is my apartment. I'm tired and I just want to chill. His eyes are extremely dilated, as if he were on every drug known to man. When I refused his entry, he turns around and as I'm closing the door, full sprints into the apartment. So this man starts screaming that this is his stuff because he has the same TV and couch. I try to reason with him and explain that everyone has this stuff, but he calls me a liar and says he'll show me. So he goes to my friend's room, which I'm assuming is what room he has in his actual apartment, and opens the door to find my friend having sex with his girlfriend. He becomes furious, shouting at the girl, saying, Courtney, how could you? Her name is Sarah. So my friend gets up and tackles the guy, where he lays until the police arrive, shouting over and over that his name is Jose and that he's just trying to chill. They ask him where his shoes went since it's snowing out and he says they're in his jacket, but he didn't have a jacket and why would shoes be in a jacket? So they asked him what his last name was which he spelled out normally at first, but kept ending with J-O-S-E. He then accused the officer of bullying and whipped out a cig from thin air and began blowing cigarette smoke in his face. He was detained and I haven't seen him since. Moral of the story is don't do drugs, kids. And to Jose, if you're out there, Let's not chill, and let's definitely not meet. 